In this video, I want to show you how I start my report development from scratch. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I prepared to make my life easier. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So when I start a report development project from scratch, I'm typically just given access to data and some questions that needs to be answered. And if it's your first time, it can get pretty daunting because you don't know exactly where and how to start. But hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have an understanding to get you started. The first thing is to start with the question. Power BI reports have the ability to create fancy interactive dashboards, but if it doesn't answer the business questions that needs to be answered, it's useless. Here's a typical kind of data that you might receive for you to create Power BI reports on. Let's say this was given to you by IT and your client, the executive client, wants some questions answered based on these data. So let's say after the initial conversations, you understand that you need to answer three different things. You need to get the total sales for this month. You want to visualize the monthly sales trend in the last 12 months, and you want to show the total sales split by country. By making sure that you identify and answer these questions, your report will be pretty much good already. You can move your reports from good to great by adding more insights and looking to add more value to the business. So instead of just answering these three questions, maybe you want to add some more details or insights like uh, showing the average over time, maybe showing some predictions or using anomaly detection. These key insights should essentially help your customers make informed decisions based on the data without having to go through the leaps of calculating it themselves. The next thing that you might want to do is to organize your report layout. So typically I use paint or a sketch pad to draw these. So I draw things like the cards, where the filter should be, where the chart should be. If you have lots of pages, wireframing them also helps. You can use PowerPoint for this. It's pretty simple, but really effective. Once you've defined your questions and you've decided on the layout, the next thing is to start cleaning your data. So from here, your journey starts in the Power BI desktop and we'll import this data into our report here. So we'll get data from Excel. We know that it's over here. We'll hit transform to clean up this data. So from here, what you want to do is to clean and reduce the data. Um, and you want to do this because you want to ensure that your reports load and run faster, which in turn helps uh, for a better user experience. So for that, you want to think about what visuals you want to show and what data you need in order to show them. Now, if you remember the questions that we want to answer, we want to show the daily trends, we want the total sales and split by country. And because this report or these requirements are more for executive level, they don't really care uh, which customer it's coming from or the actual product that's being sold. This means that we can exclude a couple of different columns here, which will make our data set um, significantly smaller. So we want to exclude the product because we don't need to show that. We don't need to show the order ID as well. And we don't even need to show the customer. All we want is to calculate the total sales from here by order dates and by country. So we can hit move columns here, which will just leave us the columns that we need to visualize our data. Another thing that you might need to think about doing is to group your data. Now, because originally this was showing individual products and individual orders, um, it means that you can even group them even further to uh, reduce the number of rows that you have. So we can do that by grouping using the group by function here. We'll click advanced. We want to group these by order dates and country and we simply want to add up the quantity and unit price so this will reduce our rows significantly so you'll see before we created the grouping we have more than a thousand rows but now that we've grouped them by country 
you will have uh, 499 rows instead. So this is significantly smaller than what we had before. The next is to fix any issues with your data. So if you have null or empty fields, or if you have some, you know, uh, if you have some wrong values in your columns, you should fix that here as well. Now you can see all of these are errors because actually we are trying to sum up uh, columns that are of text value. So I can't really sum it up uh, like that. So we need to go a couple of steps back and change these into number columns instead. So we'll change them into decimals. This. Same thing with this. And from here, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have some errors here because there are some data entries that are not values. They are either text or something else. So we'll just remove them to clean up our data set here. Move errors. Now, if we go back here, you'll see that this last step should have a clean set of quantity and unit price grouped together. The next thing you want to move on to is the branding and your report layout. When creating reports for clients, adding branding such as logos or colors goes a long way. And in Power BI, it's really easy for you to do that. So if we go back here to our report that we've created, if I go to the view, you'll see that from here you can select different themes. Uh, which will let you uh, customize what the default colors of your charts should use. And you can actually customize these further by going to customize current theme and adding the different colors for your clients. You can see here you can change the different colors. These colors will be automatically applied when new charts are created, making it easy for your report developers to uh, apply branding without them even thinking about it. You can use this tool that was recommended by Chris Wagner out there in Kratos BI, which is Color Combos. It lets you extract color schemes just by inserting the URL of the site that you want. Let's say, for example, we want to grab the colors from the Curry's website. Site. So we're going to copy the URL of the website. We'll hit get from here. And here you go. So you now have the hex colors that you can now copy and insert in your Power BI reports over here. So you can change the colors here by just adding the hexadecimal numbers. Uh, for you to use. What's great about this is you now have your own theme that you can use in this report and you can also save for other reports that you might want to use in the future. So you can save it as a JSON file and once it's saved you can reuse it by loading it into your report. Add report elements you can go to insert and you can add things like images or shapes in order to add some uh, dimensions into your reports. But what's even greater is if you create your reports or your report layouts in PowerPoint. Now I covered how to do this in a separate video and it has a lot of advantages on why you should do it in PowerPoint instead. So if you're interested in how to do it, go check out that video. So with the PowerPoint version, you can save those as PNG formats images and you can load them as page background in your report. So it means that, uh, let's say, for example, if I bring in an example here that we used for a different video, you'll see that I have just created a background without adding any elements in my report, making it super easy and light. The last thing that I do to prepare is to organize my DAX measures. If you're doing time intelligence calculations, you might want to create your own calendar table or import a calendar table. And it's a pretty easy step to do. Um, but you can do it in Power Query or in DAX. If you're going to create a lot of DAX calculations, you might want to create a measure table, which will be like a one place for you to store um, and organize your DAX calculations. And to create it is pretty simple. We'll just add, uh, enter new data here. We'll create an empty table. We'll name it, uh, let's say calculations. And you'll see on the right hand side, it will create a new query, a new uh, table for us to use. And we know that we want to create a calculation to get the total sales from the order date, from the quantity and unit price. So we'll create total sales here. We'll 
write some x here and let's say from the sales data we want to multiply the unit price multiplied by quantity and because it doesn't have a raw context it can live in this calculations table instead of the sales table uh, which really helps if you have a lot of tables in your data model and what's even great is that to convert it into a measure table you just hide this empty column here and so you see it will be pinned on the top so you can uh, store as many measures as you want here and that's pretty much all the preparation steps that i do before i start my actual report development work i really hope this video was helpful for you guys thanks again for watching give this video a like if you found it useful give it a dislike if you didn't so i know to do better for next time ask your questions in the comment section box below so i can help you and you can help others if you really enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.